has done for me. He has done for me what no man has done. Hallelujah. Hey. Hallelujah. Hey. It is the sound of victory. It is the sound of freedom. Hey. Hallelujah. 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 Oh. done for me. What the man has done. Hey, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. It is the sound of freedom. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hey, hallelujah. Oh, let the sound of rejoicing fill this house.
And in this, in this time of worship, we acknowledge that we need you even more. We need you more and more every hour, oh God. We bless you. We exalt you, King of Kings. And Lord of Lords, be thou exalted, oh God. Every hour we need you. Every moment of our lives we need you, oh God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Father, we bless you. I need thee every hour. say no, no.
I think it was about two weeks ago that uh, when Pastor George Udo was convening, God gave me a word. And I was going to speak, and God says, no. I give it to you, keep it. So Pastor George was going on, and um, he called Pastor Saki to come and pray. So he prayed, and then I tapped him. I said, now, that's part of what God gave to me. So I went to see it, and then I got to work, I think. I was going to leave work, and I thought there was a Bible by my uh, desk. I said, I thought, let me read uh, this Bible. And what came to me was set time. So I thought, and then I opened Ecclesiastes chapter 3, and God says, no. So I didn't know where to go again. So I closed the Bible, and then I went to the train, and I was preparing my message. And God said, set time. So I thought, I'm in trouble now. Because, I mean, that Ecclesiastes is where most of us know there is a set time for everything. Then I went, and then I think it was, I was on DLR, and reading, I don't know how I come about it, and I checked some, I was reading the psalm, so Psalm 102, I read Psalm 102, and then I came to verses 12 and 13. And I just hear, that is it. And I was so, so happy. So that is how I got to today's sermon. And I want to thank God for the way that we have started. So this morning I'm going to speak about your set time of favor has come. Your set time of favor has come. I'm quickly going to read Psalm 102. It says, Lord, hear my prayer. Listen to my plea. Don't turn away from me in my time of distress. Bend down to listen and answer me quickly when I call to you. For my days disappear like smoke, and my bones burn like red hot coals. My heart is sick, withered like grass, and I have lost my appetite. Because of my groaning, I am reduced to skin and bones. I'm like an owl in the desert, like a little owl in a far off wilderness. I lie awake, lonely as a solitary bed on the roof. My enemies taunt me day after day. They mock and curse me. I eat ashes for food. My tears run down into my drink because of my anger and wrath. For you have picked me up and thrown me out. My life passes as sweetly as the evening shadows. I'm withering away like grass. And listen to this. But you, O oh Lord, we sit on your throne forever. Your frame will endure to every generation. You will arise and have mercy on Jerusalem. And now is the time to pity her. Now is the time you promise to help. Father, I want to thank you. For you are great and greatly to be praised, to be adored, to be magnified. We come to you, O oh God. And your promises to us is that you will carry us on. Amen. Lord, I pray this morning that you will speak. Amen. Give us, O oh God, a listening here. 
not only hearing, O oh God, but doing Amen. that which you ask us to do. Amen. May your name be glorified. Amen. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. 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 David has a difficult time. And many of us have a difficult time. And David went into a great deal in telling God what the problems he's encountering. He told God that he cannot at times sleep. He says he was sitting among ashes. And when you look at verses 1 to 11, he was just narrating to God the difficulties he was going through. And I say this this morning that some of us are going through many difficulties, many trials, many tribulations. The psalmist explained to God his sad, desperate condition. He has physical, he has emotional, he has material problems that he was going through. He told God that he, even in the night, he could not sleep. He lies awake. And on top of it, he says to God, his companion are his enemies. So his enemies are his captors. And everything that the enemy does is to taunt him. And he came to God. He brought all his requests to the throne of God and says to God, God, this is where I am. This is my plight. Brothers and sisters, I know there are so many times in our life when we are going through trials and tribulations. We tell God, we sing hymns, we sing praises when things are going right with us. But when things are going wrong, we always like to keep it to ourselves. We don't want anyone to know what we are going through. God has made us to be a creature of expression. When we are overcome with joy and delight, we express it. But when we are overwhelmed with sorrow and pain, we keep that to ourselves. You see, friends, there is always a set time for God to do something in your life and in my life. You know, what this man was going through was so terrible. What he was going through, if we do half of that, many of us will not remember God because we will say, God, despite the fact that I'm worshiping you, you are doing this to me. But this is the beauty of the psalm, that in the midst of all, that he was going through, no matter what the causes of our suffering was, he was inviting God. He was saying to God, God, look at where I am. We come to the crunch of, the, of this chapter. But you will arise, he says, and have mercy on Zion. It is the time to favor her. The appointed time has come. And this can actually be a name that you can put. There are some verses that say Zion. But I'm saying to myself, you will arise and have mercy on Ebenezer. For the time to favor her, him has come. Yes, the said time has come. You will arise and have mercy on the people at Kennington. For the time to favor them, yes, the said time has come. According to this psalm, there is a set time. You know, and the set time, I don't mean the time in which you think it is time for me to do this, time for me to do that. You know, the Bible tells us, no. You see, we, there are two different meanings of time. There is a time that they call chronos. And that is the time in which you look at the minutes and the seconds and the hours and the months and the years and the whatever you can 
until it gets to the millennium. And there is Kairos. It represents a God-appointed time when something is to occur. This morning, my brothers and my sisters, God has come to favor us. Yes. Favor can be described as an act of kindness beyond what is due or unusual. We can therefore describe divine favor as tangible evidence that a person has the approval of God. Favor can come to us in three different ways. Favor by availability. You see, when it is available, and they look around, and they didn't see anyone else, and they said, yeah, I mean, let's give it to him, or give it to her. And there is a favor by merit in which you deserve it. So you need that promotion. So they give it to you. But there is an unmerited favor. A favor that you do not, is not available. If you look around, it's not there. And a favor that you do not merit, that is the one that I'm calling that unmerited favor. It's uncommon favor. Simply means receiving special attention from God in order to get something done. You see, uncommon favor is not about class, but it's about Christ. Yeah. Uncommon favor is not about your grade. It is about the grace of God. Yeah. Uncommon favor is not about your degree, but it's about the decree of God. Yeah. My brothers and my sisters, and those who are listening online, God is bringing uncommon favor into your life this morning. Yeah. And God is not only bringing it this morning, he's bringing it this week, he's bringing it this month, he's bringing it this year. And uncommon favor only comes from God because it is something that you do not deserve. You see, within a second, uncommon favor can take you to places where people have fought for years. Favor in many cases seems undeserved and does not follow any natural, rational, or reasonable explanation. Divine favor sometimes cannot be articulated or even imagined by the human mind. You see, there are times in which God does things, and you think to yourself, where does this come from? Where do I, how do I get this? I did not expect that is the uncommon favor. Further divine favor position you for success, and it transcends, it rises above all barriers, whether they may be racial, or cultural, or social, or financial, or relational, or even general, general, generational. Because you say, you, my generation are these. They have not got this. My generation, you know, they normally die when they are 50. Who says that? The uncommon favor of God can bring you and pass that age that you said your parents never go through. You know, friends, when God comes into a situation, when God wants to bless, no one, no power, no principalities, no authority, when God wants to promote you, there is nothing that anyone in your workplace, because it is God. God uses those whom you least expected to bless you. God uses those who thought you will never rise to make you rise to the position in which God wants you to be. You see, friends, uncommon favor is the kind of favor that comes from above. It is favor that does not follow due process. It is the favor that ignores your mistake. It ignores your weaknesses. It is a favor that men cannot comprehend. Uncommon favor is when God makes himself known in your situation. Hallelujah. Beloved, you need the favor of God Amen. to make it in life. Amen. If not because of his favor, there are many people who are better than you. Yes. They are not in the position in which you are. Yes. There are many who are in a class that you cannot reach. 
but you have been in places where they cannot go. And you will know that there are many people in the word of God that actually has received things from God that people do not expect them to receive. Esther is one of them. You know, friends, a commotion in the palace brought her promotion. Something happened. He, she did not plan it. But God planned it. When it was time for her to get into the palace, the unmerited favor. The favor of the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords rises above that which men expected and God begins to do something. And when the turn, the Bible says, of Esther came, when it is the turn of Esther, when he was about to go in there, when it was about to be seen, something miraculous happened. And my prayer this morning is that in your situation, I don't know what it is. You might be looking at yourself, and you might be looking at others, and be thinking they are far better than you. And you might be looking at situations. You know, friends, we can come, and we can dress so beautifully, but there are things underneath. My brother and my sister, the favor of God will reach you this morning. It will be a light in the dark areas of your life. You know, there are a few things. I don't want to waste too much time. There are a few lessons because we know all the stories that I'm going to tell. Few lessons on the things, on the examples that I will give. About Esther, the first lesson is this. When the day of one's favor comes, tradition and protocols will be set aside. Remember that tradition was set aside for Esther. And for you, tradition will be set aside. In the mighty name of Jesus. Protocols. You cannot see him now because he is with thee. You cannot get it now. That is protocol. Wait for your turn. It will not be your turn. Because God will take you to the front of the queue. Yeah. Secondly, Esther's request was granted in a special way. My prayer this morning is that your request, I don't know, Baba Kebo, your request this morning, I pray. I pray to God who hears prayer. I pray to God who do not look at your weaknesses, does not look at the things that you have done wrong. My prayer this morning, he will grant your request in a special way. Amen. Thirdly, thirdly, your enemies, will be put to shame, Amen. and you will have total victory. Amen. The same gallow that was meant for Mordecai terminated the life of Haman. I don't know who your Mordecai are this morning. I don't know if, it, if it's only one you have. There are many that has more than one Mordecai. But irrespective of how many they are, the gallows that they have dug for you, they are going to be in it. Haman. Haman will be destroyed in the mighty name of Jesus. You will rise. You will rise. You will rise to the position where God wants to place you. There is nowhere in which the favor of God cannot extend to. The Bible tells us in John chapter 5, 
We all know the story. He told us about the man who was at the pool of Bethsaida. The Bible tells us that this man has no one to carry him. There are others that came after him, but they had a helper. But this man has no one. This man was, seems to be on his own. He will look around when the pool is being stared, and he just look. Nothing he can do because he cannot walk there. I don't know your situation this morning, but the King of kings and the Lord of lords is right beside you. He's looking at you. He wants to help you. You see, this man, this man did not look for help on that very day. He says, why aren't you going there? He says, there is no one to help me. No one to help me. Let me draw some lessons there. Brothers and sisters, wherever you are, favor of God can locate you. Amen. And my prayer is that wherever you are, the favor of God will locate you. Amen. You see, favor will bring you under a divine focus and a divine attention. This man was brought under the focus of the almighty God. Jesus Christ saw him and he thought, today is the day of your favor. Today is the day in which you will receive unmerited favor from me. And God, God attended to him. Thirdly, favor does not care about your background. It doesn't care about your history. It does not care about your limitation. And it doesn't care about your past. You know, Jesus Christ is not begins to ask this man, no one can help you because of this. Because of that. You are limited. Yeah, but I'm limitless. You have no power. But I have the power. You know, and there are many times in which we look at ourselves, we look at our background, we look at our history, we look at our limitation, instead of looking unto God the author and the finisher of our faith. Favor brings to an end years of stagnation in this man. It brought to an end years of unfruitfulness. It brought to an end years of frustration. And I don't know how you have stayed in one place. And one place, I don't mean you're on, your, on the same seat. But you know the life in which you are living. You know the things that you have been trying to get hold of for years. That is stagnation. And my prayer this morning is that limitation will be removed Amen. on your behalf in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Unfruitfulness will become fruitfulness Amen. in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. You know, thirdly, we come to the story of Peter. The Bible tells us that Jesus Christ, he saw two boats. Peter has actually toiled all night. Jesus Christ saw two boats. Peter was not in any of the boats. But the Bible says that he was washing his net. Because they have just come back, toiling all night. What else? The only thing in those nets are the, um, um, what do you call, leaves, uh, trees, or whatever. So they thought, let's just take all these things off. And the boat was there. The Bible says that Jesus Christ just went into a boat. He didn't say it was Peter's boat. And went into there. And then they went. You know, friends, Peter is an expert in fishing. He knows where the fishes are. He's been doing it all years. 
He has done it throughout his lifetime. But this very night, they caught nothing. You know the first lesson? The fact that you are experienced does not mean you will not have struggles or disappointments. Peter has so much experience with fishing, but his experience failed him. Your experience without God will fail. Irrespective of what you know. My brother, if you are a lawyer, your experience will fail you one time. But God will never fail. Because there are times in which you go to the court and you see, you see people that you think they are more better than you. How can I? But God will just come. And God will begin to do something. That is unmerited favor of God. What favor can do is that it turns our struggles into testimony. Amen. You know, Peter, that the Bible says cannot get anything overnight. He was the one that says, please come and help me. I am having too many fishes in this boat. The Bible says even the boat struggled to move, I believe. And God will do something extraordinary Amen. in your life, in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. You know what favor does? It singles people out for overflowing miracle. Yes. And this morning, God will single you out Amen. for overflowing miracle Amen. in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Favor makes you sing new song. Amen. This morning, my prayer is that favor of God will make you sing new songs. Amen. People that have never seen you sing, don't worry about uh, your voice. People that have not heard you sing will hear you sing. Amen. Come and see. Or the, you don't need to phone Sister Helen and ask for how do you sing this because you are not singing it to people. You are singing it to God. And the God that gives you that voice hears you. You know, it doesn't actually have, matter if, you are, if it is treble or tenor or what, 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 what else is it? Auto and uh, is it auto or alto? It's auto. God hears any language that you speak to him. When you hear you know the story about Esau and Jacob because you know all the stories. That's why I'm not going into stories at all. I just want to pick certain things out of these things so that you can get what I'm saying. Esau and Jacob, irrespective of how you read it, Jacob is not the one that should get all those things. It is Esau. You know, I don't believe, and the Bible didn't say it, but I don't believe it's because of the soup. How many times have we given, so please give me, I'm hungry, that we have given people. You know, but there is something in there. You will give me your birthright. And because of, I mean, there are, there are, there are isn't, the, isn't there times in which you have told your friends, your children, what? Well, I'm not going to give it to you. And then later on, you say, okay, come. Come and have it. But you see, God has designed. God has designed your life in a way that the favor that he has, he has planned for you. There are times in which the enemy comes and disturbed it for some time. If you are a weak vessel, then you will forget about it because then your weakness, your weakness, lack of faith, affects the favor of God. I will come to that, running after, uh, uh, after myself. But Jacob received that which people thought he does not deserve. He supplanted the calling. Yet, yet, 
Yet, he received the blessing of God. Listen to this. He says, many nations serve you. When the father was blessing him, remember, he thought he was blessing Esau. You know that? He did not know that that was Jacob. He says, many nations serve you, and people bow down to you. Be Lord over your brother, and may the sons of your mother bow down to you. May those who curse you be cursed, and those who bless you be blessed. And the same prayer this morning, those who curse you, they are cursed. In the mighty name of Jesus, Amen. those who bless you, they will know the blessings of God. Amen. Because when somebody calls you, they don't want progress for your life. They don't want you to move. They want you to be stagnant. They look at you and they see limitation. But God removes limitation Amen. in the life of people. To get this kind of favor, it's not by your hard labor. It's by the power of God. Jacob receives the blessings of God. What about Joseph? Everybody normally says from prison to palace. But he knew what he went through. There are times in his life that he will be thinking God has forgotten him. You know, there are times that people, you have received prophecy and you are remembering the prophecy and years goes by and it doesn't come through. Wait for it. At its appointed time. There is an appointed time that God, except you receive a prophecy, and he says to you tomorrow, or he says to you in the next one hour, if he doesn't say that, just wait for it. Listen to what he said in Genesis 15, 19. After the death of their father, Joseph said to his brothers, don't be afraid. I'm in the place. Am I in the place of God? You intended to harm me, but God intended it for good. He says this, to accomplish what is now being done, saving of many lives. There are intentions, there are times that people has in your life. But my prayer is unmerited favor of God will turn it into good. Do you know in Genesis 48 as well? Do you remember Manasseh and Ephraim? They are the children of Joseph. You know, when Joseph brought them, the father Israel says, bring your children to me. And because Manasseh is the first one, Joseph took Manasseh on the right hand of the father. And then he says, Ephraim, you go to the left. You are the second one. But the father who cannot see clearly. The Bible says the eyes was dim. But the father, he brought Ephraim to the right and Manasseh to the left. And Joseph thought the man was making a mistake. Why do you have to? do that. But the man said, don't worry about it. He will be blessed as well. But you see, the blessing of Ephraim was more than Manasseh. The blessings of the second month that Joseph thought within himself that Manasseh will be receiving more blessing. But the father said, no. Let me bless this one, more than this one. That is God. 
Joseph cannot explain it. And I'm very sure. I don't know. The man that cannot see. That is unmerited favor. That is favor that comes from God. When a man is chosen for the position he is not naturally qualified for, especially among others that are far better than him, David was the most unqualified person naturally in his family. But God rejected others to look for him. God will look for you. Amen. Every circumstances that seems to be on the way of your progress, my prayer this morning is that God will begin to remove those obstacles. Amen. No matter what circumstances you are facing, God can move you from prison to palace. As his irresistible charm flows through to change hearts and attitudes towards you. What do you do to activate the blessing, the common favor of God? Have faith in God. Believe God. Faith, the Bible says, is the substance of things that you hope for and is the evidence of things that you have not seen. That is faith. Repent from your sin. The Bible says if you say you have no sin, you deceive yourself. And there is no truth in it. But when you confess your sin, it's faithful and just to forgive you and cleanse you of every, of every unrighteousness. Thirdly, always show favor to others. When you can, when you can, bless others. When you can, show favor to others. You do it for them. You are doing it to God. You do it for me. You are doing it to your father, who is king of kings and lord of lords. Fourthly, be a giver. Many of us, as, maybe me as well, we are so stingy. We want to keep what we have. I wouldn't actually go too much into that because you would think I'm just being too personal because of the leadership. But I want to assure you, if you do anything for these ones, you are doing it for God. If you give anything to them. I'm promising you, and I'm not asking you, you will see the blessings of God. Because you are doing it, not because of anything, but because you are appreciating what they have been doing in your midst. You need to cry out to God for favor. The Bible tells us to ask and it shall be given unto us. Lastly, when you begin to praise God, you begin to change the spiritual atmosphere. When words of praise start flowing from your lips, circumstances change. Adversaries flee. Thoughts are purified and they are energized by the Holy Spirit, which lives a spiritual confidence with every person you meet. You know, there are many times in which God gives you, God gives you a difficult assignment. Have you been there before? God gave Mary a difficult assignment. Mary, who has never met any man, who does not know any man, he says, you are going to carry a baby. You know, people will reject you because, what, because of what I'm going to do. But yet, there is a favor that God has for him. And there are many times 
in which difficult assignments, and I don't mean difficult, that you think that you cannot. <clears throat> and I'm very sure that some of us can tell you when you are called into certain post, position, you will say, how will I? How will I do this? But God sees your heart that you are accepting a difficult position and God will see you through. Amen. Like Mary, you may be facing seemingly impossible circumstances or problems, but if you respond, despite the severity of the adversary, the Bible says that according to to my word. And according to God's word, this morning my prayer is that you will know the favor of God. Amen. The last one, activating the favor of God, is prayer. When a man seeks the face of God in prayer, requests are answered. Go to 1 Chronicles 4, 9 to 10, and you will see we all know it. What Jabesh prayed for. And the Bible says God granted him. And as you pray, when you call on God, God will answer you. Amen. So what are you looking for this morning? Is it to do with medical? Is it to do with material? Is it to do with marital? Is it to do with wisdom? Is it to do with ministerial? God can answer all those prayers. Because all the people I have got notes on those ones, but that is no point. Because all the people I have mentioned, if you look at them, they have been blessed one way or the other in an indifferent different ways. So what can destroy? What can destroy the favor of God in one's life? Disobedience to God. If we disobey God, then we are not expecting divine favor of God. Disobedience is one of the things that God does not take kindly to. We need to obey. Obey God. The second thing is pride. The Bible tells us that pride goes before destruction. When we are proud, and we have read several times that Satan was sitting with in heavenly places before, before pride got into him. What are you proud of? You know, they normally say it in, um, in um, my language. You see, there are times in which you say, your father's house is the best. How many have you seen? You say, there is no car better than your car. How many have you seen? By the time you drive, I mean, you will see better ones. My father has got 25 acres of land. Somebody will tell you, my father has got 100 acres of, you know? of land. So there is nothing to be proud of. There is nothing. All that we have is been provided by God. Amen. And at times there we are at times we are so stingy. <coughs> Lack of giving. Give and see what God will do. And lack of faithfulness in the service of God. And lastly, prayerlessness. Beloved, there are so many areas in our life that need our common favor. We need uncommon favor for our marital breakthrough. We need uncommon favor in our marriage. We need uncommon favor in our studies. We need uncommon favor in our career, we need the favor of God in our calling and in our ministry. When your prayer and messages touch people's life, that is the favor of God. 
You know, there are so many ministers. For them to be seen, to be doing something, they begin to lie about healing. You, you will have seen it. WhatsApp messages. They begin to lie about certain things. They go and start burying um, children in the, on their pulpit for God to, will God move with that? They lie to you that they are raising dead bodies. It's all lies. But those are the places where people run to because they do not understand. How can somebody be pouring coke on you and drink on you and they tell you that God is walking through that? People are still stupid, though. I'm, 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 I'm serious. People are still. You know, people are still. At this day and age, you know, but yet, my brothers and my sister, when you begin to make decisions that will always affect your life and others, let's pray for the favor of God. There are so many areas of your life that you need the uncommon favor. This morning, I want you to pray to God. My Father, I need your favor. Favor me now by fire. Merit and unmerited favor. Let it fall upon you now in the mighty name of Jesus. Let the uncommon favor of God, let it locate you in the mighty name of Jesus. Let divine intervention manifest in your life. Now, favor that breaks protocol. Let it manifest in your life, in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we thank you this morning. We bless you and we glorify you. We honor your name, O oh God, because your name has been our strong tower. I pray this morning that the favor of God will surround us like a shield. The favor of God will change our life for good. We are going forth this day, this week, this month. Lord, I just pray and I declare that we will have a divine encounter with you, my Father. I pray that doors of opportunities will be open for us. I pray, O oh God, that heaven will open over our life Amen. in this season Amen. and that our set time of favor has come. Amen. Father, in a special way, Amen. let your favor locate us. Amen. Before the end of this year, Amen. give us a special breakthrough. Amen. Father, let us sing a new song Amen. before the end of this year. Amen. Father, I just pray that you will pro prosper, my brother. Amen. Prosper, my sister. Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Give my brother and give my sister Amen. a mouth-watering testimony. Amen. In Jesus Christ's name I pray. Amen. 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 Can I ask us to stand? We're going to close in prayer. Let's lift our hands to God as we a seal has already been placed on the word. A seal of prayer. But as I sat there, the word that came to me is position yourself. Favor is unmerited. However, you have to position yourself. Joseph positioned himself. Esther positioned herself. She did as she was told. That's obedience. If she had rebelled against her senior cousin, she would have completely missed it. 
Peter and those in the fishermen positioned themselves. I being in the way the Lord led me. They were in the business of fishing. And because they were around the water, it was possible for the miracle to happen right there and then. The set time has come. Lord, may I not miss my set time. May I not be in the wrong place at the wrong time. May we not be in the wrong place at the wrong time. And the positioning comes in two ways. I want to invite those who are listening online, those who will listen to this. There are two things that happen. There is a negative and there is a positive. The negative is don't be, a, don't be proud. Don't disobey. Don't be prayerless. On the flip side, on the positive side, God says, you've got to show favor. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. If you want favor, you give favor. You're not bribing or buying God. But you're saying, I'm positioning myself because I'm aligning myself with the word of God. Tell your neighbor, we've got to position ourselves. And as we lift our hands this morning, this day, oh God, our hands are reached out in expectation. Our hands are reached out in submission, in surrender. Our hands are reached out in thanksgiving and worship. And I pray, oh God, that there shall be a download of your uncommon favor in this week, in, even today, in the name of Jesus. Anyone who set time has come, may we be found in the right place to receive in the name of Jesus. This church... May there be a download from heaven and our pouring of uncommon grace, uncommon favor in the name of Jesus. Lord, I pray as we go through this week, may we be instant in prayer, constant in prayer, in season out of season. May our hearts be open, our hands be open to release what you have given to us. May there be a multiplying of grace, an extension of grace that flows from us to others. May we be givers as well as recipients of your grace in this week that lies ahead. May we know what it means to march forward on our knees in prayer. May we know what it means to march forward on our knees praising you, giving you thanks for what you have spoken to us. Thank you because the mouth of the Lord has spoken it and it shall surely come to pass. May the covenant of your blood be over us. And especially upon your servant and his family, O oh God. May there be a fresh anointing, a fresh and rich deposit upon his life. In the name of Jesus, we thank you, we bless you, we give you all the glory for what you have done in our lives today. You said you will carry us to the very end. And your favor will carry us to the very end. We thank you in the name of Jesus. Now look somebody in the eye and just... Pronounce, speak the grace over their lives. Now, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you now and forevermore. Amen. God bless you. Have a blessed week. Thank you for listening to God's Word. We are the Apostolic Church All Nation Center in Kennington, London. Find us at Tyus Terrace, Kennington, London. SE11 5LY. Our telephone number is 0207 820 On the web, we are at www.apostolic-anc.org. All Nation Center, reaching out to you in practical and caring ways.